All gamers want freedom. And what would be better than freedom of choice? Choosing and playing out your own non-linear game narrative. But if there is a narrative in the first place, is the game really non-linear at all? And what's it non-linear to? Our current definition of a non-linear game is very weak, which leads to misinterpretation and confusion. Linearity is applicable to many game elements, gameplay, narrative, level layout, and even polynomial equations. So when someone says non-linear game, what does that really mean? This is unagreed upon, but they could mean any, if not a combination of the three main linearity associated game elements. When people say they hate linear games, they usually mean linear gameplay. What about narrative and other game elements? We shouldn't generalize, because only Charts knows that linearity is essential in some other game elements, such as the creation of an engaging narrative that could touch your heart, just like many games have done before. Bear in mind that there are many elements of narrative itself that can be linear or non-linear, such as the relation of narrative to time. When storytelling is not in the order of occurrence in time, the narrative is non-linear to time. Chronology. This type of narrative non-linearity is most commonly used in film and literature, but games use it as well. However, let's address the main element of narrative linearity. Game narrative in relation to the writer. Non-linear narrative usually means that the player has most if not all of the say in how the story unfolds itself. This could make for a better player-based story experience, rather than a plot set by the writer. Linear narrative, however, is usually meant to be one where the plot is completely correspondent to the writer's wishes. The writer adjusts the exact setting, feel, and path of the story. Hence, it's the writer's story and the player's just interacting with it. Nonlinear narrative has different degrees, ranging from simple branching to AI generation, which completely eliminates writers, you know, just, just to make sure they're completely uninvolved, let's replace them with AI. Yo, this robot conspiracy shit is real, what the fuck? <laughs> A branching narrative is something that looks like this. You have multiple branching paths, ends, and even beginnings. An example is Fallout 4. On your journey to find your son in a post-nuclear world, you can join one of the factions and lead them to prevalence in the wasteland. You can choose from the branching paths of the game by choosing which faction you want to lead, and the further branching of what conclusion you want to lead them to. While the paths themselves are scripted, the player's path choice isn't. The game allows you to make choices that are not linear to the writers of the game, because they don't get to decide if you want to- Or just Fire. while Fallout 4 does use branching closer to the end of the game, the beginning and middle of the game use something called a parallel narrative, which is basically a gateway to trick the player into thinking that the game is branching or non-linear, even though it's more linear than the slope equation y equal mx plus b. A parallel situation has a preset beginning and end, but a branching middle. Now, because of this branching middle. The situation does have some non-linearity of choice, but the outcome is already decided, so what does it matter? Well, when the player is facing these situations for the first time, he wouldn't know. He'd think different choices lead to different outcomes, especially if that is implied by the game. There is one mission in Fallout 4 where you get an order to kill one of your companions. You can obey or disobey. You get promoted if you obey, and when I first played that mission, I thought, oh, I'm glad I obeyed, because look, now I got promoted, and I got this great T60D Brotherhood of Steel Power Armor. But when researching for this video, I remembered the mission, and I decided to look it up. And I found that the player gets promoted, no matter their decision. The outcome was already decided in the script of the mission. It was linear, but I did not realize it. I killed Paladin Dance for nothing. That is a deceptive linearity, my friend. Parallel narrative. And you know what's funny? It works the other way around even when playing actual non-linear games. I recently played a branching game, Omori. I did not know that the game was non-linear, I just wanted to play this cool psychological horror game, and I did. Throughout my whole playthrough, I did not realize that my choices were switching the game's route faster than my brother switching lanes doing 120 on a freeway. Wait, what the f-
I actually only realized there were multiple routes and endings because I googled it after I finished the game. Which also made me realize I got the bad ending, but that's not our point. This goes on to say that parallel narratives can easily trick the player into thinking a game is non-linear and that actual non-linear narratives can also get mistaken for linear. But someone will still say that narrative will never be truly non-linear. And I kind of agree. The player gets the non-linear choice of path in a branching game. But about the scripted branches and paths themselves? Those are still linear. And an argument can be developed that as long as a narrative is written, it'll always stay relative and linear to the writer. So for a true non-linear narrative to be created, it can't be written in the first place. But since it's narrative, it literally has to be written. And games can't write themselves yet. Well, another option is a non-linear algebraic equation equal to zero. Meaning zero narrative must be forced by writers and the environment of the game must allow the player to create his own story. Just like a non-linear equation, unbound by any set variables, the player flows chaotically. And from this chaos, the player's narrative emerges. Emergent narrative can have no emotional impact in uh, emotionless games. Oh, hashtag this, hashtag city, hashtag sucks, period. All right. But if utilized correctly, it can give you quite the emotional blow. Most worthy if mentioned is Minecraft. You spawn in a randomly generated world with no predetermined pathways or narratives. You are also provided with other sufficiently non-linear game elements to aid you on your journey of creating your own story. True non-linearity can give you memorable experiences because the more involved and influential you feel you are to a story, the more it'll stick to you. Especially if you created that story to begin with. But what if the writers needed you to have that connection when you really aren't that influential? Imagine this, you're prompted with meaningless choices every two seconds. These choices don't affect the main plot, but they lead to small and usually meaningless variations in the narrative. Many games make use of such deceptive techniques similar to parallel narrative to make you feel like you're choosing your path, but ultimately it's really gonna take you down one road. It's all an illusion, which hey, if it achieves the developer's goals and making a more fun, engaging game, then hell yeah brother. But if it's just gonna spam you with useless decisions that you know are meaningless, it's just gonna bore you to death. Can I please nuke Preston and his whole family? I do not want to save another settlement. Another settlement has sent word that they need our help. I'll mark it on your map. These linear in disguise, quote unquote, non-linear games restrict writers from writing good old linear stories and players from creating their own emergent non-linear narratives. These games fall in what I call the neutral linearity zone producing an unwanted balance, much like centrism in politics. No one likes centrists, like, choose a side bro, you're either an alpha conservative chad or a sigma libertarian. Beta centrist bro, get out of here. Why did this get so political? In past reports that have been out there that indicate that it, that Facebook collects, how many do you, does Facebook store out of that? <laughs> What if you wanted a true non-linear narrative, except that it exists, you know, it's not zero or whatever. So it has to be unwritten, but some type of provided narrative should exist so that it doesn't become fully player emergent. Also no branching, cause that wouldn't count as true non-linearity, you know, because branches are also linear to the writer. This leaves room for procedural generation, basically algorithms with sets of conditions to satisfy. These sets of conditions would tell the game how a narrative is generally structured, and the game, or AI, would take it from there. PCG has always been in use to produce randomly generated levels and terrains, which can promote replayability and player creativity. In a similar fashion, narrative can also be randomly generated to promote creative, player-made solutions to quests and missions, 
especially if it's used with other non-linear game elements such as gameplay or level layout. Just like how Minecraft can randomly generate beautiful worlds, someday maybe there will be a game that generates beautiful narrative. The movie Free Guy depicts a similar concept where advanced NPC AI interacts with the player, producing spontaneous narrative. The AI even falls in love with the player, which is kinda creepy, but it's a cool movie so watch it if you got the time. However, with current game technology, producing game AI that can fall in love and feel emotions is far-fetched. PCG narrative is actually more likely to lack emotional content, but it would also compensate with the opportunity to have more complex emergent narrative which can provide the much-needed emotional punch. PCG narrative has been in research since the 1970s, but it's still in development and nowhere near mature. Some indie games have achieved similar stuff, but the reason that we don't see it on bigger scale is that it poses many risks. When you want to produce something as sophisticated as procedural, algorithmic, artificially intelligent generative narrative, you bet it's gonna be expensive. But companies have money, right? So what's the problem? Well, the deal breaker is that PCG narrative will not be able to 100% guarantee that the AI will generate an engaging narrative all the time. Just like how sometimes in Minecraft, the randomly generated worlds are messy and distorted and boring, the same thing could happen to PCG narrative. And thus, the user end experience would be compromised and unguaranteed. But that's kind of the point. It would be true, unpredictable, unscripted, nonlinear narrative.